Greetings in the name of Jesus and welcome to another Wednesday night meeting in the presence of the Most High God. My name is Pastor Simon. I'm so glad to fill the my heart tonight. I trust you will you will find this message encouraging, inspiring, and motivating. If you're enjoying the message, smash a like or type an amen. Don't forget to subscribe to Riverside Tabernacle. We appreciate your comments. We really appreciate your comments. Uh, I see Nancy has joined us. Thank you very much, uh, Nancy. Uh, may God bless you. We're going to pray now before we get into, our, into the Word of God. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come before you as your humble servant. I have nothing to offer your children, Lord, except what you have laid upon my heart. I pray, O Lord, tonight as we listen to your word, that, Lord, your word will find an abiding place in the hearts of your children. You're the Father, they are your children. I am just the instrument, Lord. Speak through me to them and speak to me as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh, this is a bit long. Okay. Before I start, I'd just like to uh, you know, break the ice a bit and just tell you a little joke. Uh, a Christian joke, uh, a preacher joke. A preacher had arrived in a town for a new assignment as pastor of the local church. And when he got there, he, he realized he needed to post a letter back home, so he went off in search of the post office. As he got out of the churchyard, because he lived in the manse, he noticed a group of youngsters standing in front of the church on the pavement. So being new in the city, in the town, he asked them if they could direct him to the nearest post office. He received the directions and walked off to mail his letter. Upon returning, he noticed that the groups were still there. Thinking it was an ideal moment to introduce himself as a pastor and invite them to church, he said to them, Young people, may I show you the way to heaven? They stopped speaking, turned to him, and one of them replied, Pastor, you want to show us the way to heaven? Why? Not five minutes ago, you didn't even know the way to the post office. All right. Uh, we thank Pastor Oggy and Sister Francia. It's great to have you on as well. Thank you very much for supporting us. Broken crayon still color. That's the title of the message that the Lord gave me. Broken crayon still color. Now, what does the saying mean? It means simply, despite everything that you have gone through, despite everything it has, that has been done to a person or a person has done or has been through, they still have purpose and value. Despite whatever has happened to you and whatever you've done, whatever you've been through, it mean, you still have purpose and you still have value. Just because you are broken does not mean you have nothing to offer. In fact, because you have been through so much, your value has increased. I want to refer to the scripture, Matthew 5, verse 16. And it says in the word of God, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. When light is shone through a prism, it is found to break up into colors. You find when a light shines through a prism, and most of you have done this. Thank you, Pastor Ogi, for joining us. When you look through a, when you shine light, normal light through a prism, you use a torch or whatever, when it goes through a prism, the light breaks up into various colors, and most scholars know this, they've seen it. And you get the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. This means that when white light is a combination of these seven colors, what we see as light is a combination of these seven colors. In the same way, when God's light shines through Jesus Christ, 
it is broken up into a wide spectrum of colors or gifts. So these colors or gifts that we have is the light of Jesus that's supposed to be shining through us. Each of these colors represents a gift or a ministry. Make this tough. A ministry and each of us has been given a gift to be used in the house of the Lord or in the kingdom of God. And why are we given these colors? To color the life of someone, to influence someone and make their life beautiful, make their life worth living. You see, there are many people out there whose lives are blackened by sin, whose lives are blackened by shame and misfortune to the point where they're living mundane lives just existing. And God has called us to brighten their picture of life, to brighten their lives so that they see God's glory. And God's glory in you is the color that must be used to, look, to brighten and to color their lives. This reminds me of a story that I want to tell you because many people feel that they are not of use to God and they cannot be of use to anybody. And as you get older, you feel, thank you, Rob. It's good to have uh, Brother Rob uh, Men uh, with us as well. Welcome. As you get older, you find that your purpose in life is less. You seem all of a sudden that you don't really have a purpose because you're old, you're not working anymore. You might be retired and your children don't visit and the grandchildren don't phone and all these things happen. But many times we feel that we're just useless. But I want to tell you that no matter how you feel today, you are of some use. And today I want to tell you about a cracked pot. Welcome, Brother Dillon. It's good to have you. And Sister Enik. A man was used to carry water from a river to his home in two pots, which he had slung on a pole across his shoulders. However, as time would have it, one of the pots he carried developed a crack. It was cracked. And so as he walked from the river to his house, some of the water used to leak out. You might have heard the story. And as he wa walked, the water used to leak out. And this man was very frustrated with this. But because he couldn't buy another pot, he just carried on with it, grumbling as he went day after day. Every time he went down to get water, he would grumble on his way up again. Then one day he noticed something happened. He noticed that along the path that he walked, there were, little, there were little green shoots coming out on the sides. There were little plants growing. And as the days went on, these plants became flowers. He found that they would produce flowers. And he was admiring these flowers one day as he walked down to the river. And then all of a sudden he realized that the reason these, fl these flowers had grown was that the pot that was cracked was dripping water onto the side of the pot. And this water watered the dead seeds in the ground and gave them life and they sprouted and they became beautiful plants and beautiful flowers. The water that was falling out of the cracked pot brought life to the dead seeds. So remember tonight as I go into the sermon, as I speak what God has laid upon my heart, regardless of your flaws, regardless of your fail failures, regardless of your pain, your brokenness, you are useful to the master and you can make a difference. In the Bible, we read about a broken promise. In Matthew 26, 75, the Bible says that Peter denied the Lord. He denied the Lord, I think it's in verse 70, uh, 73, and then in 75, the word goes, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And the Bible says, Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Peter, the same guy that Jesus said, this is Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, was a broken man. He had done the unimaginable thing. He had denied Jesus. In his mind, he was no better than Judas. Peter was beside himself. He was a broken man. He was a broken crayon. 
When Jesus was crucified, that same week, a couple of days later, Peter was a broken man full of remorse. He felt he had no reason to live. He was a broken crayon. His purpose in life, he felt, was gone. In his mind, he wasn't good enough for the Lord. You know, when Peter went to the tomb and he saw the tomb empty, his brokenness kept him from seeing the truth that Jesus had risen. He wasn't sure what happened. And Peter eventually, the Bible says, he said to the other disciples, I don't know about you, but I'm going fishing. And he went back to his former life. He was beyond hope. He was a broken crayon. He thought the master had given up on him. He thought that Jesus didn't want to use this crayon anymore. That's what he thought until Jesus appeared and he reinstated Peter and made Peter the head of the church, the rock on which the church of Jesus Christ stands. Jesus needed Peter, the broken crayon, to complete the picture of salvation. And we need to thank God today because that salvation that Peter preached has reached us today. Crayons bring color. Dipu, are we happy to have you as well? God bless you. God bless you. Crayons bring color to your life. I've often watched my grandchildren and many other children coloring in pictures. The pictures are blank when they start, but as they color in the pictures with their crayons, the drab black outlines on white paper take on color and they seem to come to life. The crayons they use rubs off color, rubs off color onto the paper and the color gives rise to an image that looks beautiful. So too, Jesus saw Peter as a drab, as a drab, downcast, hopeless, empty picture. And Jesus applied color into Peter's life. Jesus applied anointing into Peter's life. Jesus applied forgiveness. Red reminds me of the blood of Jesus. The color red, he applied it to Peter. And he revived Peter's soul. He applied some yellow, which, is, which means hope, into Peter's life. We today are the color of this world. I said to you, Jesus said we should be the, we are the light of the world. When you break light up, it's different colors, different giftings, different talents, different fortes, different things that you can do. And tonight, we are the color of the world. And it is our job, it is my job, it is your job to bring color and to bring life to the people of this world. Jesus expects us to be the crayons that bring color to this drab world, this world that is blackened with sin and shame and misfortune. We are the light of the world. We are the colors of this life. We give color to this world. My friend, crayons don't stay whole forever. They break. Crayons break. I've noticed when little children are are writing or drawing with their crayons. They try very hard to keep their crayons intact. And when a crayon breaks, they are so sad about it. But as time goes on, they also learn the lesson that crayons break, but even a broken crayon can still color. They might be disappointed initially, but soon they realize that even those broken pieces can be used to color in the pictures and they use them. You may be broken, but God can use you. You may be a break, broken crayon tonight, but you can still color. You can still add color. The breakage of the crayons represents the times in our lives when we were broken. When we went through issues that almost destroyed us, that we thought had taken away our testimony that had destroyed us, that made us useless to the Lord. When we lost the color in our lives, however, with the help of the Lord, Jesus, he, we regained our color and we came through with flying colors. We have our color back. 
Even a broken crayon never loses its color. Breakage is necessary. There are many reasons for the problems we face. But tonight I want, to, want us to focus at one, on one, just the one. And this reason is you and I can be used to help others in similar predicaments. Whatever you're going through today, remember that brokenness that you're going through today is your preparation to help somebody who's going to go through that same brokenness tomorrow or the next day or the next month, or the next year. You cannot fully understand why you go through what you go through until you learn the lesson that I'm telling you about tonight. You will only appreciate what someone else is going through if you've been through it yourself. I lost a child when I was still a young man. I think I was 27 years old. I lost a baby. And I questioned God for a long time about the reason that he allowed it. Jiran, it's good to have you, son, and your family. God bless you. After all, I was a Christian, and I want to tell you something. At that time, I was a young man, but I was working in the church flat out. I was helping the local pastor who happened to be my dad. He lived in another town. So... He had services in five different places. So in this one town, I ran everything. I did everything. And I was, I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning and pray for an hour with another friend of mine. And yet God took my child away. And I asked God why. Some people said I was sinning. And I couldn't understand that. I felt like Job. I wasn't sinning. But they said I was. And then I asked God. And after many sleepless nights, in fact, it took some years. I finally got my answer and the answer was simple simply so you can help others in their time of loss so you can help others in their time of loss when their color has drained from their lives God will send you and God will send me to put some color inject new color into their lives you cannot understand why a person walks in the way that he walks until you have walked a mile in their shoes. They will see people limping and you'll never understand the reason for the limp until you've had a stone in your shoe like they have. Then you'll understand the limp. If you've never been poor, I can tell you, you will never understand poverty no matter what books you read. If you've never lost a loved one, you will never understand the pain and the suffering that the loved ones left behind go through. You know, some of us need a touch from the Lord tonight. We need a touch from the Lord so that our walk will change. We need to know what it is to limp. We need to know what it is to drag a foot behind us. You know, Jacob was touched by the Lord. He wrestled with the Lord. And the Lord touched him and his hip went out of joint. And forever after that, he appreciated what it was to, to have a touch from God and to understand how it's difficult it is to walk. You see, we are God's crayons required to fill in the spaces, the white spaces, the blank spaces in other people's lives. We are broken so that we can color the lives of others to bring new life to their existence. When we come through an ordeal, we are wiser and we are stronger for it. But the reason is so that we can help others. Even Jesus, the Bible says, he was a man who went through the same things we went through. Jesus was hungry. Remember when he ended up in in Samaria at the well, he was hungry. His disciples went to buy food. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was thirsty. Matthew chapter 4 tells us that he was hungry and thirsty when he fasted. He was just like us. He needed sleep. There were times when he was tired. That he slept on the boat. Remember, he put his head on the cushion and he slept. But Jesus understands when you are tired. Jesus understands when you are weak. When you are weary, when you just can't go on. 
Jesus understands when you are broken. Brother Kagema, we thank you for joining us. God bless you. God bless you. It takes many colors to complete the picture. Many colors. Pictures are not made of single color. They are not monochrome. In the pictures that our little children we see coloring, there are different areas which require different colors. There are color combinations. Some places the colors are dark and some are light, but they all blend together to change things. Lorna, uh, Lorna Andrew, great to have you. God bless you, my sister. To breathe new life into the picture. And the different colors represent different things. Red to me represents redemption, the blood of Jesus. Blue represents holiness, which we need to have. White represents peace. We should be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, the word of God says. Yellow, yellow gives me hope. For some reason, green speaks of growth and nurturing and so on. You can add whatever meaning you have, you want to your colors. God requires us, Jesus requires us to paint into people's lives the missing colors. They are people who have a picture of their life, but certain colors are missing. Jesus could have dismissed Peter. But he didn't. Instead, he gives Peter another chance to be useful. You see, Jesus knew that Peter still had color in him. Jesus enhanced Peter's resolve to complete the task he was assigned. He encouraged Peter. Peter saw the blackness of death. Peter saw, um, Peter saw his sin and his shame. But Jesus saw the colors of life. You know, there's something I just want to tell you. There was, there's a little difference between Judas and Peter. Both sort of denied the Lord. But Judas didn't go back to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. He killed himself. Peter went back to the Lord. And we know Peter. We don't remember Judas as much as we remember Peter. You too, my friend. You too, my sister, my brother, you have a color. You have color in you, no matter how you may feel. You may be broken. People might be looking down upon you. Even the lone, the lowliest of persons has color. Color. By color, I mean you have an anointing. You have the gifting. You have a testimony. You have something that you can put into somebody's life from your experiences to tell them that Jesus still lives and Jesus can live in them and he can bring the color back into their life. No matter how colorless you appear to yourself when you look in the mirror, your brokenness does not mean that you're devoid of color. No, it means that your color has intensified. Your color has multiplied. When a crayon breaks, it becomes more pieces and each one of those pieces can be used. Each one of them can color somebody's life. Your color is your testimony. Your color, your brokenness has become your testimony. You have what it takes to bring color into the lives of others. When I read my Bible, I find that the Bible is full of very broken crayons. Broken crayons that can still color. That's the title of the sermon. Broken crayons still color. In the Bible, there are many broken people. We can call them broken crayons who might have thought that their color was gone. But when they thought they were colorless, when they thought they were useless and the time was up, God used them again and again and again to add color to this world. Abraham was a coward who was prepared to prostitute his wife Sarah so that he could be saved and flourish in a foreign country. If you read the Bible, when he went into Egypt, he was afraid of Pharaoh. And he wanted to, to thrive in that country. So he told Sarah, please lie for me. Tell them you're my sister. And Pharaoh took Sarah as his wife. And when God brought plagues upon Sarah, uh, uh, Pharaoh, Sarah was returned. He did this again when he, when he was in Gerar. When he met King Ab Abimelech. Again, he asked Sarah to lie. And Sarah was taken there as well to be the king's wife. But God stopped that. God stopped that. God intervened. 
And I'll tell you why God intervened. This is a freebie you're getting tonight. This is something that is free for, for you. And I don't think you've thought about it before. If Abimelech had slept with Sarah, we would still be doubting today who Isaac's father was. If Abimelech, King, King Abimelech had slept with Sarah, until today, scholars would be doubting and they'd be saying, Isaac's father was not Abraham because he was too old. It was Abimelech. But we know that God stopped this and he proved that both Sarah and Abraham in the old age could have children. Praise God for that. That was just a freebie. Abraham didn't trust God enough to wait for the promised heir. He and his wife decided they would, they would have a surrogate to give them a child. And you know, he went in, he slept with his servant girl and he had a baby called Ishmael. But still God chose him as the father of the nations. And the whole world is covered with the children of this broken crayon. Abraham was a break, broken crayon. But even today, Abraham's colors still remain in this world. His footprint is still on the sands of time of this earth. David, King David was an adulterer who murdered to hide his sin. He murdered an innocent man to hide his own sin. He was found out. He pleaded with God and, and God forgave him. And God gave him the wonderful honor of being the father, the forefather of Jesus. And Jesus in the Bible is called the son of David. This broken crayon, David, broken crayon was still used to color. This broken crayon was called a man after God's own heart. This broken crayon had added color to so many lives by the story of his trust in God and the Psalms that he's written. When you are sad, you'll find a Psalm that is just the right color for you. When you are happy, you will find a Psalm just the right color to, to, for you. Whatever your predicament, in the 150 Psalms, a lot of it, most of it is written by King David. In those Psalms somewhere, a Psalm of David will give you the right, will have the right color for your occasion. Jonah was another broken crayon. He was a disobedient runaway who questioned God's grace. But God rescued him and he used him to color the city of Nineveh with the color of his love and redemption. Esther was a teenage orphan captive. She was torn from her family and placed in the harem of a foreign king who I think was probably responsible for the death of her family. She was a broken girl, a broken woman, a broken crayon. But God used her to reprieve the Jews and to preserve his chosen people. The nation of Israel owes its existence to this young woman and the color that God saw in her. Gideon was the broken crayon in his family. He was the youngest, he was the smallest, he was the weakest. He had no self-confidence. But God used him and 300 men to rout a whole army of probably 80,000 people. The enemy saw the color of red when they heard the trumpet sound. Rahab and Mary Magdalene were broken crayons. They were prostitutes, outcasts, people, women that no one wanted to have anything to do with. Yet these broken crayons have stories that even now stand as testimonies of the color that God adds to our lives. Both were closely associated with the Messiah, one as an ancestor of the Messiah and the other one as a handmaiden to Jesus. Ruth was a broken-hearted widow who became, who became fed up with the Moabite way of life and she chose the, the Israelite way of life. She was a broken crayon, so broken that a near kinsman who should redeem her didn't want to redeem her. He did not want to redeem her because he didn't see any beauty. He didn't see any color in her. But Boaz, Boaz saw the color of beauty in her. He saw the beauty of Jesus in her and he married her and she was a great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. Jacob was a crook. Moses was a stammerer. But we just read in the Bible how these broken crayons were used to shape and color our world, the world as you know it. You too tonight 
or a break, maybe a broken crayon. You may be a broken crayon. Chances that every one of us is a broken crayon. Every one of us had some break point in our life. But these break points in our lives and in your life does not mean the end of your use. It only means that you are ready to color. You have multiplied your color. God has intensified your color. Every piece you are broken into can be used to color somebody's life. Every experience that you have had is an experience that you can talk about to somebody else and show them how Jesus brought you through. When the artist, the Lord is using you as a crayon to color his world, you may break, but he will never discard you. The difficult experience you, experiences you have been through add color into your life and the testimony of those adds color into other people's life. Remember your experiences are not in vain. They were not in vain and they will not be in vain. When I remember my little child that passed on, I don't feel sad. Really, I don't. No, because I believe I will see her again. When a relative in my family dies, I don't feel sad. Because if I know they've saved, I know I'm going to see them again. But I know that because I lost a little baby, whenever I must speak to someone who has lost a child or a loved one, when I tell them my experience, I see it brings color to their faces and hopes, hope to their lives. You see, my testimony is my color. People out there are waiting for you to spread your color, to tell them your testimony so they can benefit from your brokenness. The color you possess is needed in the drab existence of many souls. Don't think for one minute or one, or one moment your time has come and gone. Your time is now. Your time is now. The master artist, the Lord Jesus Christ, wants to use you. Spread the color of love, the color of generosity in this time of this, of this lockdown. You might have a lot of color green. Green is the color of money. Maybe you've got a little to spare. Think about somebody else who doesn't have and spread a little of the color. Spread some the color of help around. Pray for people, spread the color of healing, spread the color of encouragement and hope to those who need it. Remember, an unbroken crayon, a whole crayon, is an unused crayon. And an unused crayon is a useless crayon. The crayon is just a piece of colored wax if it stays in the box. You will not serve your purpose if you remain idle. You have to be removed from the box and working in the master's hand. Brokenness makes you stronger. The breaks you've had make you stronger. Peter was so broken because he promised Jesus that he would die with him. But he failed miserably. Peter was born with the name Simon, meaning a reed, meaning weakness. Bending, Jesus changed his name to Peter, which means rock. And he used him a rock as a rock for the foundation of the church of Jesus Christ. Your weakness in God's hand is your strength. His strength, the Bible says, is made perfect in our weaknesses. I want you to consider this. Peter said he would die with Jesus, but he didn't. He failed miserably. He didn't die with Jesus, but in the end, Peter died for Jesus. You see, he was stronger for the brokenness that he experienced. When a bone in your body breaks, they say that after it has set and healed, it becomes stronger. The thing that broke you actually made you stronger. The experiences that marred your picture actually intensified your color. Whatever you are, whoever you are, Wherever you are, whatever you have, you can be of use. God does not only call the qualified, he also qualifies the called. It does not matter if you are able, just be available. The last thing I want to say as I close, the picture outlasts the crayon. The picture outlasts the crayon. 
Do you realize that the picture remains long after the crayon is gone? The crayon, as you use it, gets shorter and shorter. The pieces get smaller and smaller. And then it's gone. Yes, the picture outlasts the crayon. Long after you are dead, the color you added into the picture of other people's lives will remain as a legacy. Abraham, David, Peter, and the other broken crayons of the Bible, and the, and the wonderful people that you might have known, your fathers, your mothers, that would, died before, that have gone to be with the Lord. Some of them are long since dead. But the legacy of what they've done lives on. What you've said to people and what you've done. When you painted their canvas, when you've colored their canvas with your testimony will live long after you. You are called to spread color into the lives of others. And in so doing, you give off a little of your life. Little and a little and little until there's nothing left to give. And then the master takes you home. I don't know what your color is tonight. I have not been through what you've been through. Your color may not be the same as mine. Your brokenness is surely different from mine. You have experienced different brokennesses in your life, different breakages, different experiences, different difficulties. Your color is not the same as mine. The only one thing we have in common, I know for sure, is that our experiences have a reason and that reason today my friend my sister my brother is to add color to other people's lives don't lose any opportunity to add color regardless of how many times you have been broken because there's always somebody out there who needs to hear your story you may have been broken yes but a broken crayon still colors a broken crayon still colors. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, I come before you today and I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful message you've given us. And I know, oh Lord, that even as I close now, I know, oh Lord, that you, your Holy Spirit is going to speak to all these, your children. Some of them, Lord, are broken crayons today. Some of them, Lord, have left, lost the will to live. Some of them think their testimony is worthless. They think the experiences they have gone through is of no use. But Lord, I want to remind them today. And Holy Spirit, I know you're speaking to some of them right now. That the sicknesses that they've gone through, the financial difficulties that have gone through, Lord, the loss of loved ones, the divorce they've Divorces they've been through, the accidents they've been through, the physical ailments that they are carrying. All these things, Lord, are the colors of their life. All these things, our Lord, are the pieces of the crayons that you need to color somebody else's life. Help them to be willing crayons, Lord. Help them to remember that broken crayons still color. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I just want to have a little commercial here. I want you to remember to like our page, Riverside Tabernacle, on Facebook. And if you can, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It's called Riverside Tabernacle. Look for the gold logo of the dove. And then join us again on Sunday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m., same place, same time, in your living room, in your bedroom. I'll be in my living room and we'll speak to each other to see what God has to say. And on Sunday evening at half past six, we have a service with Pastor Augie Fire, a wonderful man of God. And I'd like you to, he's called Impact Fire International. Impact Fire International. That is his page. You look for Impact Fire International and you will find it, like it, subscribe to it. If you miss the, the morning service and catch the evening service, if you watch the morning service, still catch the evening service. Wonderful messages. God is, God is doing a new thing. And I want you to remember in this time when we have this COVID-19, the churches have been shut down. The churches have been shut down. 
It's almost as if the devil is suppressing us. But I want you to understand and I want you to pray that God will release the churches. That God will give us the permission to go back to church. This is Pastor Simon. And as usual, it has been a rewarding, visiting, rewarding visit with you. I hope you feel the same. God bless. Until we meet again, take care.